Our story begins in Paris at night. Two witches are running away from their evil counterparts. They find themselves surrounded by a flight of bats that turns into a person as it hits the ground. That is, if you can call that a person. Ugly as hell, Erla is the queen bee of the evil witches. She has brought her guards to capture Maria and her daughter, Ophelia. Trying to escape that beauty challenge trio, Maria takes her daughter into an abandoned building. She gives Ophelia a few instructions before leaving her in charge of the heavy book she's been carrying. The girl hides under the bed and Maria blows magical dust over her and the book, making them both invisible. Erla makes her entrance right after that, always followed by her guards. She wants the book back. Maria claims that she doesn't have it anymore. Ophelia has just taken it to Diandra, the leader of the Good Witches. And that means time's up for Erla. Showing off some pickpocketing skills, Maria holds up an hard glass medallion that was sitting on Erla's chest until just now. She turns it upside down, and the sand flows up, ignoring gravity. Deeply insulted, the evil witch calls her guards. Maria is engulfed by a cloud of bats and taken away. Suspecting that the girl hasn't left at all, Erla begins to search the room. But even when her nose is inches away from her precious books, she can't see a thing. After that, Ophelia follows her mother's plan. Taking the book to Diandra could be tricky to do on her own, not to mention that Erla is expecting that now. So she hitchhikes to Berga Castle instead. The sign says it's home to the scariest ghost ever. And apparently, tonight is the premiere of an event described as a haunted dinner. Berga Castle is actually home to three people, and two of them are still alive. Kwe Bud is proud to be the only official ghost in the castle. He is now rehearsing his performance for the haunted dinner. Charles, the castle's butler, doesn't sound very impressed, which is why they both panic to see the first patrons arriving. The other living person in the castle is the king. His name is Julius, the 111th. Recently dumped by the queen, he tries to hide the pain from his loyal subjects but anyone can see what's going on from the state of his room. The only thing more abundant than booze are the pictures of Queen Constanza. Waking up in a grumpy mood, he asks Charles to remind him why they're hosting this stupid dinner anyway. His loyal butler says, this is just one of Hoi Bu's many bad ideas. However, he admits that the ghost is trying to help. Julius has gambled away all his fortune by now, and they can't keep eating the furniture for much longer. With a painful sigh, the king comes downstairs to host the dreadful event. Addressing the audience, he tries to present the spectacle in the scariest way possible, but he keeps getting interrupted by a little boy who looks like one of the naughty kids at Wonka's factory. The kid makes several corrections, objecting to everything the king says. That's when Charles was supposed to rescue Julius, but he's too busy making things worse. Ignoring the fact that Hui Bob is an actual ghost, he coordinates a series of special effects to enhance the show. That doesn't go unnoticed by the insufferable child. He mocks Hui Bu and exposes all the tricks. Upset at the deception, the audience leaves the castle without paying a penny. Hui Bu tries to keep a positive outlook, and not only for the king's sake. His own dream is to become a scary ghost one day. The haunted dinner was a failure, but he can choose to see it as a lesson for the next time. Julius interrupts the motivational speech to inform him that there won't be a next time. That's when Ophelia knocks on the door. She wants to see Horiba because he is the only one who can help her. Julius is puzzled by that statement but ready to let her in. After all, it's just a little girl. Huiba begs to differ. She shuts the door rudely and tells the king the girl is a witch. Julius opens his mouth to question the accusation, but then he sees Ophelia again. On this side of the door, just like magic. Huiba explains that his intense fear of witches comes from the fact that he has a couple in the family. But the girl knew that already. Maria is Huiba's sister, which makes Ophelia his niece. Completely shocked at the revelation, the ghost begins to test her with a pop quiz on Maria. She can answer all his questions easily. The ghost still hesitates to welcome her as a relative. 
No longer able to doubt her identity, he is forced to reveal that Maria made his childhood a bit difficult. She kept tricking him into all sorts of trouble and won every game using magic. Julius points out that Gui Bud died during a card game as a direct consequence of his cheating. The king is now convinced he's related to Maria. When Charles comes in, Ophelia is introduced as a royal guest. Meanwhile, a very unwanted guest is approaching the castle. Erla is picking up a silver hairpin that Ophelia dropped earlier, which confirms that she must be in Burgek Castle. In the kitchen, Charles tries to come up with a meal while they hear Ophelia's story about the Howardless. Erla has been stealing from the good witches, and we're not talking about packed lunches here. She takes years from someone else's life and adds them to her own. The Hardglass is some kind of scorecard, but it's not where that kind of power comes from. Only a spell from the Necronomicon can accomplish something like that. Ophelia has hidden the book inside magically powered Russian nesting suitcases. She says her mother won them in a card game. Her uncle's mood is much improved now. He is a huge fan of the Necronomicon, with all sorts of themed souvenirs to prove it. The legendary book is famous for its dangerous spells, and some of them could plunge the whole world into darkness. Hoi Ba sees it as the key to improving his own spookiness. Worried about his excitement, Ophelia makes it clear that he can never use that book. That was the whole point of stealing it from Erla, so it would no longer cause any harm. But the girl's words are hard to hear when the book itself starts to speak. Julius and Charles are astonished, but the other two show no reaction. Hui Ba proudly introduces himself as Burgek's official ghost. The Necronomicon quickly picks up what weaknesses can be used to control this little fool. It begins to talk about special spells that can make you feared by everyone. Julius cuts that kind of talk right away, putting the chatty thing back into the drawer. But they are already in danger now. Erla shows up with her guards, and they take Ophelia to the attic. The two men rush to save her while the ghost comes up with his own plan, ignoring absolutely everything he was told. Hoi Ba grabs the cursed book and reads aloud a few words. The spell gets rid of the intruders for the time being, but Ophelia is furious. She tells the others that Erla knows they have the book now, and she'll reduce the entire castle to rubble to get it back. The king is not happy to hear that. Now their only hope is Diandra and her castle is in the witch's woods, a bit far from Burgik. Hui Ba then has another idea. When she sees him bringing her an old broom, Ophelia complains about the offensive stereotype. Luckily, Julius has an idea of his own. It's already morning when he takes them outside and reveals a biplane. As it has only two seats, it's determined that Charles won't be joining them. He looks a bit hurt, but the king restores his ego by saying that the castle depends on him. As Hui Ba can go through solid matter, any compartment will do. Off they go then. While Charles bravely fights his separation anxiety, the other three fly to Diandra's castle. Hidden near Hui Ba, the Necronomicon takes the opportunity to tempt the ghost in a quiet voice, so the other can't hear it. It tells him how mighty and scary he could be if only he gave a chance to powerful spells. Flying over witches' woods, Ophelia finds it strange that there are no witches to be seen. Suddenly, the plane begins to dump all the fuel on its own, and Ophelia's spells are not working properly. Julius is forced to resort to an emergency landing, which is a polite way to say he crashed into a village. Nobody seems to have noticed an airplane has just fallen from the sky. Not sure if they're in the right turf, they decide to avoid any use of magic. Huiba also makes himself invisible. Posing as a regular guy with his daughter, they get into the closest tavern. Ophelia recognizes the drawings all over the door. They're part of a protective spell against witchcraft. Inside the tavern, the two foreigners are quickly spotted as such. A large dude covered in tattoos comes to deal with them. His name is Andre. Julius is so afraid that he begins to lie more than necessary. He also mentions witches too often just to clarify he has nothing to do with them. Fed up with this nonsense, Ophelia blurts out the truth. Her mom is a good witch, like herself, 
and she was taken by the bad ones. Everything changes when she says all that. We see that Andrade is actually super sweet. Posing as a tough guy is a hard act for him to keep, but a necessary one. He says good witches are more than welcome at the tavern, especially now that so many have gone missing, just like Maria. All that salt and the pentagrams are protection against the culprits. The bad witches, Andrade takes them to their table and explains the menu in the most cheerful way. He even reveals secret ingredients in some of the dishes, even though nobody asked or expressed any curiosity. He then says that their ghost friend is also welcome to sit with them. As they exchange a surprised look, Andrade reprimands them for expecting such bigotry at his place. It's not like he never served a dead customer before. After dinner, Andrage offers them a room for the night. To keep the evil forces at bay, he lays a line of salt by the window. But their crashed airplane is still right outside. It could lead their enemies right to them. Andrage says he can get a few guys to move it. Julius offers to join them and leaves Hoibo in charge of protecting Ophelia. The little witch tells her uncle that she heard many stories about him. Huibo's ego begins to inflate, but her next comment bursts that bubble. Apparently, he is known in the family as a funny ghost. The girl doesn't mean it as an insult, but it makes him sad anyway. Trying to cheer him up, she takes out the Russian nesting cases to show him something she carries everywhere, to avoid loneliness. She opens one of the drawers to reveal a bunch of puppies, so many that it's hard to remember all the names correctly. Realizing that one of them has run off, Ophelia steps out for a moment to find the puppy. From another drawer, a familiar voice begins to whisper. It's the Necronomicon. Once again, luring Hoi Ba into his evil pages. All the glory of dark magic is waiting for him right there. Trying to fight the temptation, the ghost says he made a promise to his friends. The book points out that those are the same people who never take him seriously. His own family thinks he is a joke. Charles ruined the haunted dinner with cheap tricks because he doubted his ability to scare the guests. He is even despised by a king who wasn't good enough for his own queen. As you already know, Kui Bud is not too hard to convince. In his haste to get the book before Ophelia comes back, he accidentally breaks the line of salt that Andre had left there for protection. It's not long before the bats come through that window. Julius arrives just in time to see them taking Ophelia and the Russian cases. Afraid of the consequences, Hui but doesn't tell Julius that it was his fault. Andrade gives them directions to Diandra's castle, and they enter the woods. Just when they're about to admit that they're lost, they come across a gingerbread house. The ghost convinces Julius to take a bite before resuming their quest, and they end up caught in a trap. But when the gingerbread witch comes, she lets them go, and Egan offers some cake. She's been reading a book about making friends, and it says she must abandon certain habits, like eating her guests, for example. So they begin to talk about everything they're going through. When the witch hears them saying that Erla already has the Necronomicon, she begins to pack the house, determined to leave at once. She then explains how powerful that book is. Losing it probably made Erla realize her fragile scheme. She's been stealing from her peers a couple of decades at a time, but she can do much more. The book has the power to open the gates to the underworld, causing such disaster and unbalance that she could devour many witches' lifetimes at once. The gingerbread witch wants nothing but distance from this whole thing. So she points the way to Diandra and splits. Soon. Our heroes get to the gate covered with eyeballs. They are allowed to enter once they prove their identities. Diandra turns out to be a gorgeous witch, and she's happy to welcome a pair of allies. In fact, she seems particularly happy with Julius' company. Hui Bo almost feels like a third wheel. But then he sees something very odd. It's one of the puppies. The one that keeps running off, as he's probably doing right now which means the Russian cases are here, but how? By the time Hui Ba manages to do the math, the shape-shifting spell is already gone. Diandra's castle had fallen days ago, and Erla only took her form because of the green cocktail. It happens to be a truth serum, 
So when she asks Julius where the Necronomicon is, he answers truthfully. He has no idea where it is, because until now he thought she already had it. But then she asks the same question to Huiba. He takes the book out of his armor and hands it to her. Erla sends them both to the dungeons, but they fight off the guards and escape. Now Julius's wrath won't be so easy to escape. He is so disappointed that he says he'll leave Burdick and start a new life as soon as this is over. It sounds like they need an expert in friendship. And look who's here to help. Gingerbread Lady. Getting to the chapter about not leaving your friends high and dry, she decided to come back and join the battle. She gives Julius a cookie that turns him into an old witch so he can infiltrate the castle. Spotting a new fan, Erla urges him to come closer and participate in the ritual. That means the disguise is working, so it's a good thing. Expect that there's a bunch of stuff he was supposed to know as an actual witch. On top of that, the effect of the cookie begins to wear off and parts of his face are shifting back to the original one. Faking a bathroom emergency, he runs to another room just in time to avoid getting caught. Gingerbread Witch doesn't have the same luck. The guards bring her to Erla, saying she was snooping around the castle grounds. Julius and Hoy, Ba watches Erla transformed her into a pig. Then she's put with a bunch of others. That's what happened to Diandra and all the good witches. They hide quickly when the guards come, watching them use a secret passage into the dungeons. Following that path, they find Maria and Ophelia. Their gratitude makes Gweeb Ba feel bad, so he decides it's time to come clean. He tells them what happened and apologizes for causing so much trouble. Suddenly, they see that the guards are coming. There's nowhere to hide and no way out of the dungeon. A hooded man comes out of nowhere and takes down all the guards. Everyone is surprised to see it's Charles. Ophelia makes them all invisible before they leave the dungeons, but Erla can see through that spell now. Before she can dump them all into the cauldron, Huiba grabs the Necronomicon and threatens to destroy it. While Erla begs him not to, the book begins to dazzle him with all kinds of mystical bribery. But he has learned his lesson now. Using the book for the last time, he casts a spell over all dark magic, automatically turning it into good magic. Julius can see that he gave up on his biggest dream to do the right thing. So he forgives him, and they return to Burdick. Weeks later, they're all making lots of money. Every kid wants a picture with the funniest ghost in the world. And this is the end. This was a recap of the 2022 movie We Ba and the Witch's Castle by Rat Pack Film Production, starring Michael Herbig and Rick Cavanian. Which part of the story was the best? What would do with a book like that? Let us know in the comments below with hashtag Cinemarca. Until next time.